Tyson Fury appeared on TalkSport earlier on today, where he reiterated his demand of $500 million to face Alexander Usyk. Now, I would like to think that Fury's just using this as a negotiation tactic. He knows that the Saudis have been offering silly money to various different sportsmen, and therefore he's just fishing around to see how much they're willing to offer him. But when push comes to shove, he'll be willing to get sensible and settle for a much lower figure, which is more in line with his commercial value. That's what I would like to think. I would like to think that Tyson Fury has every intention of fighting Usyk in Usyk's next fight. Not drawing it out for 18 months and allowing Usyk to fight a bunch of mandatories where he could potentially lose or even take damage because he's a couple years older than Fury. So he's not going to be around forever. I would hope that Fury doesn't allow such a scenario to unfold and end up facing a diminished version of Usyk down the line in a strategic kind of fashion. I hope that's not the case. I hope he just wants to fight him next and has every intention of fighting him in Usyk's next fight. But this type of stuff does make me nervous because for some reason, as good a fighter, fighter as Tyson Fury is, very rarely are things straightforward with him. There's usually some funny business going on with regards to the way he interacts with his rivals. Contrast that with Alexander Usyk. This is a guy who Fury calls a middleweight, right? And this is because many, many years ago, when Alexander Usyk was a teenager, he fought in the middleweight division. It's got nothing to do with where he's at now. He's obviously not a middleweight now, is he? But Fury is trying to take advantage of naive boxing fans who don't know any better. And they might literally think that Alexander Usyk is a natural middleweight now. In any event, Usyk turns pro in 2013. He wins his first world title in 2016, three years later, against Krzysztof Glavatsky in Glavatsky's backyard in Poland. So we know Tyson Fury likes to talk about how he fought Klitschko and Wilder in their backyards. Well, let's see how many times Alexander Usyk has fought people in their backyards, and he never even talks about it. So he beat Glavatsky in his backyard in 2016, had two defenses against solid cruiserweights in Tabiso Machunu and Michael Hunter, and of course, fought Hunter in his backyard in the United States. Then he took on former cruiserweight champion in his adopted home country of Germany, Marco Hook. Then fights Maris Breedis in his backyard in Latvia. Then fights Morat Gassiev in his backyard in Russia. And at this point, he's undisputed cruiserweight champion. So there's no messing about with Usyk. There's no faffing about arguing about this and that and all this nonsense. No, he's straight in there, old school, fighting, on, fighting in everyone's backyard. He doesn't care. He just wants all those belts and he wants the glory and, of course, the money that comes along with it. And he's going to it directly, not going around the houses or any funny business. Then, of course, fights Tony Bellew, who had some claim to being WBC cruiserweight champion. Usyk already had that belt, but Tony Bellew gave it up rather than lost it in the ring. So that's where the claim came from. Stops Bellew again in Bellew's backyard. <laughs> then goes to the United States, fights Chaz Witherspoon in his backyard, fights Derek Chisora in his backyard, fights Anthony Joshua in his backyard for the unified heavyweight titles, and of course beats Joshua. Then fights Joshua again, not necessarily in Joshua's backyard, but when you consider the fact that one of the judges had the fight for Joshua, you know, it's not really that neutral a territory, is it? So that's Alexander Usyk, the middleweight, as Tyson Fury calls him, the guy who, according to Fury, was rubbish against Anthony Joshua, and it was one of the worst world title fights he's ever seen. That guy doesn't mess around when it comes to making big fights and fighting the best in the cruiserweight division and the heavyweight division. So why does it always have to be 
some funny business with Tyson Fury? Why can't it be as straightforward with him as it is with Usyk? Like, what's that all about? Please, I want to hear from the Tyson Fury fans. When Usyk was doing these AJ fights, I'm sure he got paid a lot of money, but he didn't make money an issue. Yeah? Tyson Fury, on the other hand, <laughs> again, I hope he's not making money an issue. I hope he's just fishing around to see what the Saudis might offer him and that eventually, when he doesn't get anywhere close to 500 million, because of course he's not going to get anything like that, when he doesn't get anything close to that, you'll accept a more realistic offer. If Tyson Fury was to say that he wanted to be paid as much as or a bit more than Anthony Joshua in either of the Usyk fights or Usyk, that would be a reasonable demand. But to talk about 500 million, I mean, this is just silly stuff. And of course, Fury is trying to justify it by saying that Tiger Woods was offered something like 800 million by the Saudis to play in some golf tournament or league, whatever it is. Well, let's just compare Tiger Woods' net worth to Tyson Fury. So between 1996 and 2007, Woods earned an estimated $769 million. So between 96 and 2007, in a space of 11 years, he earned nearly a, a billion dollars as it is. Then, later on, uh, in, where are, we, where are we at now? I think this is 2009. They said that at the time, Woods' net worth was closer to 600 million. Okay? And, again, this is 2009. How much was Tyson Fury worth back then? How much is Tyson Fury worth now? Because I can tell you it's nothing close to 600 million. And, of course, Tiger Woods is not a boxer. Tyson Fury is comparing his earnings and uh, you know, the money that Tiger Woods is getting to what he thinks he should be getting. It's absurd. It's like if you drive a bus, comparing your wages, let's say you earn 30 grand a year driving a bus, and there's someone earning 200 grand a year flying a plane, and you say to your boss, well, he just got a pay rise and he's now on 200 grand a year flying a plane. I want similar money driving a bus. It's totally absurd. <laughs> Tiger Woods is in a completely different sport. What's his earnings got to do with Tyson Fury? Nothing. It's ridiculous. So this 500 million thing is all nonsense and silly talk. Fury's never been in that kind of category. He's never been close to a Tiger Woods in terms of his commercial value. So. I hope he gets sensible real quick when he realizes the Saudis aren't going to offer anything close to that. Yeah, if he wants to talk about 100 million, I mean 200 at a real push. At a real push. And by the way, with the Tiger Woods deal, this is what you guys need to understand. It was for Woods to participate in a league, okay, a, a tournament league like the PGA Tour. And the PGA Tour doesn't consist of you playing one or two games as a golfer. No, it consists of you playing loads of games. I think it's like dozens of games in a PGA Tour. Whereas Tyson Fury wants this kind of money for having one or two fights with Usyk. What absolute nonsense. <laughs> you know, the, the deal that Woods was, uh, apparently, he apparently turned it down, but that was going to be for like multiple, multiple games. Not like one or two as far as I, I'm aware anyway, because that's how the PGA Tour is. It's loads of games that you play in the PGA Tour. You don't play one or two games. So, so yeah, Fury is just talking absolute nonsense here. And I can only, as I keep saying, hope it's a negotiation tactic that he isn't trying to stall the fight and hope that Usyk gets old or gets damaged or gets beat, but that he's going to fight him in Usyk's next fight. Let's hope that that's the case, people. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below.